Hello friends, welcome to the fourth part of the best games of Paul Morphy series. Until now, we saw that Morphy arrived in England to play against this top England player that is Taunton, but Taunton did not accept his offer, so he was a little bit disappointed. But still, he played some of the best games of his career in England and in autumn 1858, he travelled to France. He arrived in Paris and he played one match against French champion Horvitz. But the match did not complete because during the match only Horvitz fell ill and whatever the prize money he got from the match because he won that he was declared as the champion he decided to spend it on the travel of the great Adolf Anderson's travel from Breslau to Paris and obviously he offered him a friendly match if he accepts it well Anderson accepted the match offer but he said like he cannot really uh, quit his job and come to play the match he needs to wait till December that is till Christmas holidays so Morphy was waiting for him to come to Paris and during that break he played some uh, exhibition matches simultaneous displays and even played blindfold games against his fans and some of the strongest players of that era well in one night at one night what happened like he was in opera theater and he decided to play a game against two strong amateurs and what happened in this game is very very interesting the game become very famous because morphy demolished his opponents with a brilliant combination sacrifice and today we are going to see that game it was played between morphy and duke of brunswick and count isor and one more important thing is that it was played in opera theater that's why this game is famous as the famous game of opera theater so without further delay let's get started with the game and see what happened so morphy played e4 then e5 was played knight to the f3 d6 d4 and this is kind of natural opening well here as we have already seen knight to the d7 should be played here or even you can play e into d4 but black player decided to pin the knight and played bishop to the g4 in general terms, in the opening, we should develop our knights first before developing the bishop. That is a general theory which was also like proposed by Stenis, the next world chess champion. Well, bishop g4 is a little bit weak. That's why here Morphy played uh, d into e5, capturing the pawn here. And here black must capture the knight on f3. Because let's suppose he captures the pawn on e5, then what will happen? Yes, queen into d8 king into d8 and white will win the pawn with knight into e5 now the f7 is also attacked g4 is also attacked most probably black will play bishop to the e6 and save his position but still white will be pawn up so that is not something which uh, black will be uh, playing in this position he played bishop into f3 and now queen into f3 and black played d into e5 and here in this position white played bishop to the c4 threatening checkmate on f7 well Morphy has already played this game and his uh, previous opponent played uh, something like uh, queen to the e7 in this position but he decided to play his opponent decided to play knight to the f6 defending the mate on f7 but now double attack comes in the center with queen to the b3 now Morphy is attacking f7 as well as the pawn on b7 and it is very difficult for black to defend the position well he needs to give up one pawn so he decided to give up the pawn on b7 and defended the pawn on f7 with queen to the e7 now here white can obviously capture the pawn uh, with queen into b7 but black can play queen to the b4 check and he must exchange the queens and after this uh, the end game will be better for white but morphy was not in any mood to go for the end game even though that is a better end game for him so he decided to develop his piece with knight to the c3 he's not going after the pawns he wants to develop his pieces as quickly as possible now the knight can also jump on b5 and d5 so black decided to stop his uh, jumping squares with c6 move well morphy is not going to stop he played bishop to the g5 pinning this knight and it is little bit uh, difficult position for black as you can see the screen is there on this square because of that screen this bishop on f8 is not coming in the game and this knight cannot really come to the d7 square because the pawn on b7 will be hanging in that case so you can say he was a little bit in zugzang position so to get rid of uh, the annoying this battery on this diagonal black decided to play b5 and dislodge this bishop from the square but now 
Morphe plays a brilliant combination and finishes his opponent in great style. The combination starts with knight into b5. Well, after c into b5, he plays bishop to the b5 check. And now it's almost compulsory for black to play knight bd7. And now Morphe plays castle, bringing the rook in the game and attacking on d7. Well, here you can see there is pin on this diagonal also. And next idea will be to play bishop into d7 as knight into d7 will not be able to play because bishop will capture the queen. So black naturally decided to support the knight with rook to the d8 and now Morphe unleashes another sacrifice that is rook into d7. He is taking advantage of this pin and this pin also. In pin, like in chess, pin is very very strong. You should always remember this thing. Whenever you can pin and take advantage of the pin, you should do it. And here black played rook into d7 and now Morphe brings another piece in the game with rook to the d1. Now it's almost impossible for black to defend the position. Maximum he can play queen to the e6 and here, okay, if white wishes, he can go for queen into e6, pawn uh, into e6 and bishop into f6 and after this the end game will be better for white obviously because he is pawn up also and the king is also very very bad but morphe did not want it to go for all these things after queen e6 he gives up a brilliant checkmate to his opponent and the brilliancy came up with bishop into d7 check and here knight into d7 and now can you guess morphe's move well he sacrifices his queen now that is his trademark we have seen his previous games also and he is never shy of sacrificing the queen he plays queen to the b8 check and after knight into b8 he announces the check and mate with rook to the d8 and he finishes off his opponent this is really brilliant way the way morphe played in this game is phenomenal he checkmates his opponent in a nice style giving sacrifices one after another first he sacrificed knight then you can see the rook and then finally queen this is really beautiful game uh, even uh, top players of that time said like this is one of the greatest games morphe has played in that time so i hope you enjoyed this game and you will share this game with your friends also till then take care and if you are not subscribed to my channel till now do subscribe we will be meeting in the fifth episode of this series till then thank you Bye.